Hello, this is Ivan Irons with cncinformation.com, and you're on day two of the CNC e-course that I have set up for beginners. And today we're going to go over design for CNC. Now when we step back and look at that overall process of five steps, you'll see this one is the first one, design for CNC. We're going to be thinking and planning of what we want to build. If you remember that flow chart, here it is again. We are on the first step. Now, just like anything, if you plan correctly on the front end, you're going to get a good result. Now, if you started your planning when you were going to machine or you're out there in the shop, uh, you're probably going to have a bad result. So we want to do all of that strategic thinking up front and figure out what we really want to make before we spend the time and energy going after the other steps in the CNC process. So there's some questions and these are the design questions and there's more than just what I have listed here but you'll also hear these called project requirements. So what size will this be when we're done? What material will it be made of? Is it going to be steel or aluminum or plastic or rubber? I mean, there's a number of different materials that we use. Who is the customer? And really, more than that, what does the customer want? What's the end result? When do they want it? How many? What's their use? Um, which is the kind of the final one I have listed up here. What's it going to be used for? In my experience fabricating things, certain measurements matter and other measurements don't. So you need to figure out what those critical dimensions are that you need to hold and then see maybe where you can cheat some other things as you make them. Now for the hobbyist at home in their garage, this is a question I always ask myself when I'm building something. Is this a part or is it art? So parts are generally mechanical components and I always think of this as industry or manufacturing where you're making parts for someone it's a part of a bigger whole uh, you know there's tolerances you have to follow pretty rigidly or is it art and art is generally non-functional though there is functional art out there and it's decorative so really it's the look of the overall piece when it's done does it strike you as something interesting uh, dimensions generally aren't as critical. You don't have to hold quite as tight a tolerance as when you're doing art. But these are some of those questions you have to ask up front. So let's take a look at part and art again. On the left we have what I consider a part. It's pretty geometric. Uh, you know, there's angles and curves and that sort of thing but uh, when you stand back and look at it you go you know that's a part you could pull out of your car or a tractor or you know just about any sort of machine and then on the right hand side we have art and you probably recognize that as a moose and there are some pine trees there's also this type of CNC now this one on the right happens to be for a CNC plasma cutter this is a shot out of sheet cam which is a cam software and you'll see the start points there and kind of uh, how the plasma cutter will cut that out out of steel but you know you have to think of these you know is that moose's horns are is that dimension very critical versus the part on the left where we have a couple of holes there you know that dimension could be critical so keep that in your design thinking as you're designing for CNC going forward and what you want to do in this phase, in the design phase, you want to describe visually what you want. Now the more accurate that you can make that, the better outcome you're going to have. I've worked with a number of people that say, eh, you know, how about something like this? Or how about something like that? Those projects usually get off track. When you have very specific requirements or a very specific idea on what you want, Usually the outcome uh, works out to everyone's satisfaction. And really what I recommend is to sketch out your idea to start with. Create multiple designs. And when I say sketch, I'll show you in a picture in a second. But draw it out. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it gives you a rough idea in your mind of what you want to accomplish. Now, 
as you're sketching, I like to sketch a number of different variations or versions on how you would build this part or art. And one of those is really going to stick out. One of them is going to stand out to you if you make multiple ones. And that will really be the path or the fork in the road that you're going to want to go after. Now here's a shot. This is a sketchbook. I carry sp sketchbooks around with me virtually all the time. And I have ideas, and most of these kind of fall into that art, uh, but I manufacture them as well. But uh, as I have ideas, I will note them and uh, just kind of make little comments here and there so I remember the idea as I'm doing it. Usually I start out with 2D designs in multiple views, which we'll talk about in CAD a little bit more. But uh, I try 2D designs and look at it from a couple of different angles. But I note them in a notebook. And then later, just like I'm saying, I come back and one of these really sticks out as the winner. The one that I'm going to want to go after. And that's really the lesson for today. That was designing for CNC. Now tomorrow, we're going to do CAD, Computer Aided Design, which is taking our uh, initial thoughts and ideas and requirements and converting them into a computer design or translating them into the computer. I'll see you tomorrow and in the meantime if you have any questions at all or you're interested in some more information go to cncinformation.com or you see the web address of my blog right there. Thanks.